Welcome back to Westmoreland on the Gridiron each and every Wednesday at 7 p.m. right here on the Westmoreland Sports Network. Sean Myers now joined by the head coach of the Norwood Knights, Mike Brown, after his team won their Week Zero matchup against rival Penn Trafford 26-14. First off, Mike, congrats. It feels like one of the bigger wins in recent memory for the Norwood Knights. Do you and the players kind of echo that sentiment that this is a you know defining win? Yeah, I mean, that was... You know, kind of all off season, kind of all preseason camp. That was kind of our goal. You know, is get a week zero win and start off fast. So um, it was it was really cool to see the whole community come out, the whole school come out and support us. You know, we were excited to be on you know the winning side this time. Well, your team was really good in the second half, but you had to come from behind a little bit. What did you see in terms of the resilience, and how did your team get better as the game moved along? Yeah, I think that was the biggest key is the kids never gave up. And I think if you would have saw, you know, any games last year, it was the same kind of way. You know, we saw ourselves down in a bunch of games, but the kids never gave up. So, you know, I tip my cap to all the kids because, again, you know, that's something that we really can't teach. You know, they already had that from day one when we got in here is, you know, the resiliency, like you said, but, you know, never giving up and always keep fighting. And, you know, we had a couple close ones last year that didn't go our way. So it was really good to see it finally turn, you know, kind of the tide and finally get in the win column, you know, in those close games that we had. Now, Flick and I came out during training camp, talked to you, got to see your team. And, you know, obviously your team looked pretty good at that point. But there's always optimism when teams are in training camp that this is what we're going to do better. This is gonna, what we're going to do differently. And I think the focal point was running the football well, certainly one weekend, it looks like uh, the expectations have been met. How has this program taken strides in terms of the running game and being more balanced as opposed to a year ago when it was pretty lopsided in favor of the pass? Yeah, I think up front, especially, you know, we finally, you know, have a group up front that takes pride in it. They put the weight on that they need to um, in the offseason. They, you know, got a lot stronger in the offseason. That was kind of the focal point, you know, all the way back in, you know, January. And we had a good group that kind of took that challenge on and accepted it. And they, they want to be, you know, the best position group on our team, but, you know, it also helps when you have a group of running backs that can run the ball like they did, you know, Jackson, Jake and Giovanni really ran the ball, you know, hard. And that's what we, that's what we like to do. But, you know, every year, you know, we're going to be different with our personnel, but, you know, we really thought going into this offseason that that needed to be a focal point, you know, of our offense to get them moving. And we kind of talked to them, you know, after the game on Sunday. And we told them, you know, last year, those third and twos, those third and fives, you know, we weren't converting because, again, um, we weren't strong enough or big enough up front. But now finally we're moving people to give those backs, you know, some room. And you can see once they get some room, you know, they can make people miss. So, you know, it was almost a whole team effort because even, you know, you see our quarterback getting downfield, making blocks um, on the last play, pushing the pile. So it took a whole team, you know, to finally get there. But now our challenge is, can we stay there and can we keep running the ball, you know, week in, week out? And as good as that run game was and as instrumental as it was in the victory, I still think the biggest play offensively was that 80 yard touchdown that got your team right back in. It gave you momentum. Tavares tonight, about midway through the third quarter. How did that play work? Yeah, I mean, we were coming off of, you know, PT obviously scoring and we needed a good drive. And, you know, I tip my cap off to my two offensive coordinators, Joe Larisha and Connor Schulteis, because, again, that was a play that we thought, you know, would work, you know, planning through everything. But, you know, we saw a matchup that we liked. We checked out of it. And any time you put the ball in Tristan's hands and you're getting the ball to another playmaker like Jake, you know, we're expecting good things to happen, which did. Was there anything else that kind of flew under the radar that you thought was key towards that victory against the, the Warriors? Uh, I think our defense, you know, they they had the mentality of the bend but don't break. You know, and we kind of talked about that. You know, if we can hold teams to field goals like PT did to us, you know, we were, we were in good situations. But we made a lot of key stops, fourth down, third downs that, you know, really – kind of changed that pace, but I really give credit to our defensive line because they stuck in there, you know, with a team that is very good at running, very physical, you know, and they kind of stepped up and we had, you know, that, like I said, that bend, but don't break mentality to kind of keep them out of the end zone, which I thought was huge. 
I know a few years ago, Hempfield area was the talk of the WPIL with that great start. That was your second year there as the head coach. This is now year number two at Norwin. Don't want to get too far ahead, but do you feel some of the same, I guess, ingredients that allowed the Spartans to make that big leap from year one to year two now here at Norwin? Yeah, I do. But again, you're, you know, we're two different, you know, places and, you know, we have different kids and things like that. But I think the work ethic of both, you know, both schools where we were at, the kids really bought in, you know, to what we were preaching and they started trusting us after that second year. You know, I think the first year they see us, you know, trying to implement an offense and defense, but the trust factor, I think really isn't there because they really don't know us on a personal level. You know, after that second year, after that first off season, you know, getting them all the way through a season and then getting a spring, getting a summer, you know, the kids can see us. They can see why we're doing things. They can see, you know, why we're training that hard and different things like that. But they, again, they see our coaches on the personal level and they see, you know, that we do care greatly. And I think that trust factor really, you know, gains a lot of respect, you know, in that second year. Talking to Mike Brown here on Westmoreland on the gridiron. I know there was so much excitement and joy once the game got underway for Knights Faithful, but there was a, a somber moment beforehand, and I'm sure it's something that you and your players recognized. A couple of former Knights players both died as teenagers since the end of last season. I would imagine that's got to be difficult, especially for the guys that played with them, to to kind of balance the focus for the game, but also understanding the perspective that came with the passing of a couple of their former teammates. Yeah. And honestly, you know, I don't think there's a lot of other teams that had a, I guess, harder spring than, you know, Noren. And it brought the kids and the young men really close, which, you know, you hate to see something like that happen, but it brought this team and this program closer than I ever saw. Um, even, you know, before the game, Colin's uncle brought in his speaker that we would use, you know, every pregame. And, you know, that kind of gave the kids a little bit of extra motivation. Same thing with Josiah, you know, the older kids that played with him. Um, it gave them a little bit more, you know, motor and it gave them a little bit more determination, you know, to go get it done. And again, anytime you see that, it's a, it's a tragedy. And, you know, I really, really tap my cap off to the administration in Norwin. Um, they were awesome through that times. You know, they were there whenever these kids needed, you know, a shoulder to lean on. But it also, like I said, it brought this program closer than it ever been. And, you know, we were we were very thankful that we could have came out with a W for both of them. So you get that massive win, but uh to keep it up, you have to knock off another pretty good team. And that's the Kiski area Cavaliers who are coming off of a very impressive performance in their own right in week zero. You're going to have to do this one on the road as well. So what jumps out about Kiski at first glance for you? I mean, anytime you're going to play Kiski and it's very similar to Penn Trafford team is they're going to be very well coached and they're going to be physical. Um, their, their line is very big. They're very physical. They get on blocks, they stay on blocks. And then again, they have a, powerful running back with a good quarterback and some weapons. So, you know, we're after Sunday, we kind of put it into perspective that, you know, the Penn Trafford victory. Yeah, it was well-deserved. It was awesome, but we kind of have to put that in the rear view for now. And we can, you know, kind of talk about that at the end of the season, because we have a very hard challenge, you know, coming in this week, week one. And again, you know, I don't, our schedules, it's a tough one. So, you know, whether it's good or bad, you know, we're always moving on to the next day, you know, and we're just right now we're trying to get ready for a very, very good Kiski area team. Of course, one of the storylines with the Knights is to move back to 6A and how challenging that will be. But before you get into the conference, you have these opportunities to get some pretty signature wins. How important is it to build a head of steam heading into 6A play? Yeah, I mean, we talked about it as a staff and as a program, like we have to start off games fast and we just, you know, kind of relayed that over to the season. You know, we need to have a good start, which I don't think we did um, last year. You know, we had some close games that we couldn't finish out, you know, and that's just how it that's just how it rolled. But again, we're we're in a situation now, you know, we're starting off good, but we need to keep that momentum going in because, again, I think it's starting to give our kids confidence, you know, and I think when we can play with confidence and we can play fast, 
you know, and with our physicality, you know, we should be able to compete. We should be able to, you know, to get some wins, you know, on this schedule. And that's what we expect. Lastly, uh, I, I know that it was a pretty special environment uh, last Friday You at home with a nice turnout. Obviously, the Warriors had a good turnout with their fans as well with the short trek. Sometimes that's kind of lost if you get deeper into a season and you're not having a good season and you're playing teams that are all, not all necessarily geographically close. But if you're able to continue this success and we saw the new lights as well in full effect, a really cool atmosphere, how much of an advantage might your team have when you are uh, at Knight Stadium ultimately? Yeah, I mean, the lights were they were, I think, a surprise to everybody. They were a surprise to me, even. too. That I was thought, really cool. <laughs> yeah, I thought the lights went out at, at a point, and, you know, we were trying to call on the kickoff team. I couldn't find anybody. But, um, no, it's awesome. And to see this Norman community and this school, you know, come out and support us, is that's what it's all about. That's what high school football is about. And we kind of talked about it. You know, at pregame, you know, this is why you play high school football. This is why you do everything in the offseason to get to play in front of two, you know, great communities that are rivals that really don't like each other at times, you know, and that's that's why you play the game. And, you know, it was awesome just to see our side and to see it packed, see the band playing, seeing the student section, the way they were, you know, and how loud they were. It was very awesome to see. And, you know, we hope that we can keep putting on a show for them, but we also want them to know that we, we appreciate the support, you know, and we, we want to see more people each and every game, especially like you said, you know, if we're going to be playing a lot of teams that aren't really that close, you know, then you're talking about having a little bit of home field advantage, which is definitely can help. Well, Mike, thanks so much for doing this. We appreciate the time. Congrats on the win and keep it up. Thank you. I appreciate it. That is Mike Brown, the head coach of the Norwood Knights. We'll take a quick break and continue with plenty more to come right here on Westmoreland on the Gridiron.